Hello and greetings from Iceland, but it's time to go with the lava flow again. And this time I'm going to share with you some of my own uh, recent photos that are captured uh, close to the place where we expect the lava to uh, flow down to the sea. And I'm also going to explain the uh, geography of the area with some aerial photos in order to bring you as close to the scenario as possible. The volcano itself is no longer the main attraction because its behavior has uh, changed uh, significantly in the last days. It's getting harder to get close by, and uh, one more hiking trail closed to just uh, yesterday, Sunday, and the police did uh, also stop all traffic out there while they were figuring out ways to keep everyone safe, since uh, there have been cases where people have been putting themselves at risk, and uh, that is not what we want. But uh, regarding the lava discharge up there, it seems to be still on a rise, and I was reading this morning that it's pumping up enough lava to cover nine football fields every day, and the total volume is now around 63 million cubic meters. The lava discharge was around 5 to 8 cubic meters per second for the first weeks, but as of now, it is around 11 to 13 cubic meters, so it looks as the channel is getting wider. And everything continues to tell us that we are witnessing the birth of a sealed volcano. So the excitement goes on, and long-term event seems to be more and more likely. It is also interesting that the lava flow seems to be constant now. The pulse in the channel has changed, so the best part of the show seems to be over, for a while at least, the splash part. So the main attraction might be this increased lava flow where we see the valley Nautai being fed from three places now, three directions. And still we don't know for how long time that valley will hold. And after it fills up, where the lava will come flowing down is the question of the day, or what changes we will see in Icelandic landscape. So I brought my camera there last week. It was a very short trip due to weather, but I was also gathering footage for some additional side stories about the region, since this is a place that I care deeply about, and overall I do want my channel to be able to grow from other content categories as well, hopefully to outlive the eruption. So please check my links and playlists for the side stories around the volcano. But the story of today starts here, on this aerial photo, and here we have the lava accumulating in the Nautaya Valley. So I'm bringing you a bit closer now, with another aerial photo. It is shot from this location here, but this is a good overview photo of those uh, magnificent changes in the landscape where it is uh, flattening out little by little. But the valley Nautai is to the right, and we see also how the lava has been closing the new walking path there. And as for Nautai, it's not clear now if they are going to make barriers there, like I spoke about in my last update. And I really doubt that they will even try it, because even if they could hold back the lava with barriers in order to keep the south coast road open for a while longer, it is not something good to be driving close to a lava barrier that might close the road anyway for security reasons. So the next photo I'm going to show you is shot around here, facing east, below the Nautai Valley, and it seems that the road administration was keeping the slope of this road to minimum by following the natural slope down to the farmhouse Isolskáli, which is the easternmost house in the municipality of Grindavík. So I'm moving the camera there, just by the intersection to Isolskáli. It is a farmhouse, but there has been no farming there for the last 20-30 years. There was some tourist operation going on there for like 10 years ago, but it's a private land and it's all closed now. And it doesn't look good for them. I read in an interview with one of the worried landowners who knows his land well, and he said that it looks as if lava will come down just by the road, straight over the houses and cover the farmland. The landowner mentioned also the possibility of steering the lava west of the farmhouse, over the cliffs behind the farmhouse, into the sea. It doesn't seem to be all that simple, and that could also just be a temporary solution. 
waste of dynamite. So I'm gonna take a moment here to show you around and notice the tunnels under the road, but there are more of them around here and the tourists tend to ask what it is. And this is Icelandic sheep traffic control. And uh, sheep tunnels ain't cheap, but we do them anyway. Then we turn left to the sea. We have this uh, 2000 year old lava field that is uh, literally surrounding this uh, old farmland that uh, got lucky back then, obviously. And uh, looking over that uh, lava field to east, if we drive over that for a few minutes, we will find ourselves on another uh, lava field and it is called Ögmundarhraun. And that lava field is younger, and you can see it here from air. And this lava field is from the year 1151, or the so-called Kriesvik eruption. And uh, that volcano system is also responsible for the lava fields that are located just west of Reykjavik. So there was lots going on there. And the Kriesvik system is a big one. It created the new land both north and south of the peninsula. And if it happened once, it can happen again. And the Krisuk system is still looking suspicious, like I've spoken about in earlier videos. Or as history tells us, if one of the six systems goes off, the others might follow. And we are now on a place that is called Seltangar. And Seltangar will be investigated by archaeologists this summer, since fishermen used to stay there during fishery seasons. So this is just a precaution to make sure that the area has been drawn up properly and investigated if it goes under lava. Which however seems to be a rather far-fetched possibility as it looks today because uh, it's pretty far away from a volcano. But at least there is some long-term thinking going on and uh, those are some of my photos from there. To north we see the south coast road but the land is rough and it's hard to imagine people staying there during winters, living in some kind of uh, shelters from the rough lava when they were not fishing. There are plenty of lava reefs down by the sea and other formations, but I'm turning my camera to the volcano now. It's possible to see the pollution coming from it. And uh, like so often before on this peninsula, I chose to take photos rather than to offer you shaky videos from the tripod. It is always wind there, and if it's not wind, 911 is going to get really busy. It's that bad. People just don't know anything else. But overlooking this area, I have the feeling that uh, the lava won't reach this place. First, it would have to accumulate by the farmhouse to be able to crawl east over this lava field, which uh, must be unlikely since it's a clear path down to the sea there from the farmhouse. So it came to my mind that uh, archaeological research in Iceland, they have been financially starved for a long time. So I thought, yeah, they are going to use the chance now to get some extra budget. But then, we never know. This volcano shield could grow to be enormous by the years, and we want the lava to go east, sadly, for this old farm. And the latest news from today, June 14th, is that the bulldozers are coming back up there and they are making a new barrier and that barrier is to prevent the lava to flow down to a place with yet another interesting name for you to practice with and that is Nothaga Kriki. Nothaga Kriki. And the Nothaga Kriki is here and if lava would accumulate there we are really looking at worst case scenario toward the longer future. From Nothaga Kriki we are talking about easy path for the lava to reach the road to Grindavik, the Blue Lagoon the power plant there, and worst of all, the town Grindavik. But I recently made a 40 minute video in three parts about that town where I used to work. So I'm leaving a link to that rather than to repeat myself here, since it's uh, plenty to talk about when it comes to Grindavik. So it is clearly long term thinking going on. The civil defense is preparing for long eruption and a huge volume of lava. And uh, to be honest, I have hardly had the guts to calculate this uh, all the way. And the reason is simply because uh, if it's going to go on for decades, it's uh, absolutely nothing we can do. So we must take into account all possible scenarios or for this to go on for a few months, years or decades. And looking again at this picture, 
we have a nátaga kriki behind the bulldozer and behind that is Grindavík. So the reason for those uh, new barriers are quite obvious. Experts are however not certain that uh, this new barrier will hold for long, like the older ones, but it will buy us some time for sure, and it's only time that will tell if it's going to help us for a longer future or to protect Grindavík. So this is how it looks. It could be better, could be worse, and the future of the town depends on forces that we cannot control. So I will of course continue to post updates about this, and between the updates I am continuing to strengthen my channel with other content as well, where I describe Iceland my way as usual. But I am only trying to prevent that my channel won't drop down to nothing if the eruption would stop. So I need to create content as well that is more stable than the ongoing volcanic eruption. And I'm sure you understand. And uh, my content needs also to be more stable than the Icelandic weather. But this was the camping place in Akureyri, North Iceland, yesterday. So the only place to stay warm in Iceland today is by the volcano. So I'm going back there soon. So this is a long-term task. And I'm very thankful for the responses. And uh, then we have the summer solstice coming up. And I'm hoping to capture some uh, footage of that through time lapses. So it's plenty to come, and with that, I'm sending you best regards from the snowy volcano island, Iceland.